aspect of the cost to society of a monopoly compared to a perfectly competitive market is that consumers pay a higher price and see less product available for purchase. This affects consumer surplus and as a result, total surplus. Consumer surplus is the difference between the maximum price that an individual consumer would be willing to pay to receive a good or service and the actual market price that the consumer has to pay. It is the area below the demand curve and above the market price. Producer surplus is the difference between the minimum price at which an individual supplier would be willing to sell a good or service and the actual market price that the supplier receives. It is the area above the supply curve and below the market price. Total surplus is the total net gain to consumers and producers from trading in a market. It is the sum of consumer and producer surplus. In a perfectly competitive market, the market price is exactly equal to each producer's average total cost and there's no producer surplus. If average total costs were constant, there would be a producer surplus. Firms are making a normal profit, the amount of profit they need to stay in business. They are selling their product at exactly the price they need to sell it and not a penny higher. When comparing a perfectly competitive market to a monopoly, a reduction in both consumer surplus and total surplus by the monopolist can be observed. Consumer surplus is still the area below the demand curve and above the market price, but the price is now the higher price set by the monopolist. As a result, consumer surplus has shrunk from being the large triangle to being a small triangle. Total surplus has also shrunk. Unlike in perfect competition, there is deadweight loss in the economy. Because the monopolist reduces output and raises the market price, compared to what we see under perfect competition, the economy has less activity than is efficient. There is excess capacity in the market. Sometimes the monopolist could produce more, but chooses not to because its profit-maximizing amount of output is below its maximum capacity. By comparison, a perfectly competitive firm's profit-maximizing amount of output is also its maximum capacity of production. At the market price, it can sell all it can produce. The higher price that a monopolist charges also reduces the quantity demanded compared to that in a perfectly competitive market. The law of demand still has its effect, and at a higher market price, the quantity demanded in the market is lower. In the short run, the economy sees higher prices and lower output with a monopoly than it would under perfect competition. This is also true in the long run. Under perfect competition, ease of entry makes it impossible for any firm to maintain earning above normal profits. Increased competition from new competitors would ensure that all firms in the market earned normal profit. This keeps long run prices down under perfect competition. In a perfectly competitive market, firms make profit by selling as much as they can at the given market price. However, a monopolist with its market control can charge higher prices than those in a perfectly competitive market. In a monopoly, however, the high barriers to entry for new competitors and subsequent lack of competition allow the monopolist to keep earning above normal profits, and there is no pressure for it to lower prices or to add output to the market. There is also the possibility of higher costs in the long run, as the monopolist has no need to innovate once it has secured the market. It has no need to develop new and more efficient techniques, as it can make a high level of profit without doing so. In fact, as a way of maintaining its advantage, it may spend most of its time developing more barriers to entry instead of new technology. An unequal distribution of income is also possible. The monopolist producer surplus was created by reducing consumer surplus, a direct transfer of wealth from consumers to producers. Its higher profits could be seen as unfair as they have been achieved by charging a higher price than a perfectly competitive firm could. This also reverberates through the wider economy. As a result of paying the monopolist higher prices, consumers have less money to spend elsewhere in the economy than they would otherwise have. Producers in other markets are affected because consumers have less money to spend. And consumers are affected again because they cannot afford to buy all of the products they wish to buy in these other markets. Although monopolies are generally regarded skeptically and are typically monitored closely when they exist in order to guard against the monopolist abusing their market power, monopolies also have some potential advantages. In a market that is a natural monopoly, 
a single supplier is the most efficient way of operating. As such, the monopolist actually charges a lower price than if there were even two firms competing in the market, and much lower than if there were a large number of suppliers, as is possible in perfectly competitive markets. This could be because of high startup costs, such as in many public utilities, where high setup costs prevent others from entering the market, and a monopoly may be the only way these goods are provided. The monopolist break-even price, the minimum price that it needs in order to cover costs, is lower than a new supplier could be, and as a result, the market price is lower as well. These markets are heavily regulated by the government to ensure the cost savings are passed on to consumers. Innovation is one of the barriers to entry in a monopoly. Lack of innovation in the long run is also a potential cost to society, but monopolies can be a long-run benefit to society. Research and development is expensive, and it too can have economies of scale. A monopoly making above normal profits has a pool of money that it can spend on developing and supporting innovation, as well as an available market to implement all this cutting-edge research, the result being lower cost and greater innovation over time.